Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the channel. So I have here a Thinkware M1 Motorsports Cam. It's kind of like a dash cam for motorcycles. I actually, if you've watched my videos, I have one on my Honda CRF300L. Now I have one I'm going to install on the Honda VT750 Shadow Arrow. Should be a pretty easy install. I just got to basically find the locations where I want to put the cameras because this does come with a front and rear camera. 1080p video. Very cool. Um, you put an SD card in it. The main module will go under my seat. Uh, the recording DVR part. And then we have a remote that goes up here on the handlebars where you can actually... It has a button you can turn on the Wi-Fi. It also has a button that you can push record on. So it will actually capture a 60 second video of something. Say, if you see something that you want to save, you push this button, it will, it will record 10 seconds before you push the button and 50 seconds after, and it will save that into a locked file because what this does, depending on the size of memory card you have in this unit, it once it gets full, it will actually start overriding the over, old files and with that being recorded and locked into a separate folder, it don't override that. So anything you want to save, you want to push that. Uh, that 60 second video will be saved and you'll be good to go. So this thing uh, is really cool, easy to use. It has an app, a Thinkware app that you can get on there. You can take the videos off or you can take the SD card out, take them in, put them in your computer. Uh, very cool. It has electronic image stabilization on the cameras, which is awesome. Uh, the only one that I've ever done out of several dash cams for motorcycles I've installed uh, that has the electronic image stabilization. So we're going to take this thing, get it installed on this Honda Shadow, take it out and do some video and see what it looks yeah. like. So the first thing we want to do on the Shadow is remove the seat, get it out of the way because that's where we're going to mount the DVR unit. And we need it out of the way so we can get to it. We need to access the fuse panel to plug the wires in. And we need to find a location to install the cameras on front and rear. Okay, so let's get this box opened up. Very nice looking box. Definitely they've done some good packaging. Says a few things here on the end about the super night vision that it has. Uh, about the full HD 1080p two channel, which is the front and rear. The electronic image stabilization, IP66 waterproof. The Sony Starvis sensor that it has in it. The telecommand, which is the remote. The GPS, the Wi-Fi that it has. Uh, that you use to connect to your phone. And the angle is a 140 degree angle on the cameras. So well, let's take this thing and open it up out of the box. So first off, we have our two cameras right here. So this one is our front. This one here, you can see it says rear. Then we have our manual, a hugely thick manual. I'm sure that's because it's in multi-languages. These are the mounts, which are really nice mounts, and they actually use a GoPro style. So if you don't want to use this uh, 3M side sticky mount, you can actually use a GoPro mount to mount it. All different kinds of options. Uh, these little clamps here will come off. The camera clamps right inside here, and this is nice and foam padded, protected, so they go right inside like that. Of course, here's all the wires, the other mount. This is the DVR unit right here, and this is our remote. Then we have our wire connections here that we will connect to a fuse, so when we turn the key on, it will automatically come on and start recording. And have real nice watertight connectors, so when you plug the cameras in, and they just thread into these connectors here, the front and rear are different connectors, so you really can't get them in the wrong place. Uh, the remote, you can see the button right here for record, the Wi-Fi button. And then it has double-sided tape on the back so you can stick it wherever you need it. So the DVR unit's right here. It has have a rubber plug right here so you can get to it. In here we have our connections, and right here is where we're going to put our micro SD card. So it does come with a micro SD card. This one is actually a 32 gigabyte. I'm going to put a large one in there. That's just not large enough, really. It would work, but not for a long period of time. Looks like it does come with a card reader and it comes with some extra 3M tape in case you mess one up and need to reuse one. Comes with all the Allen wrenches that you need to put it together, put it on with. Okay, the micro SD card that I'm going to put in there is a Samsung Pro Plus 128 gigabyte card should be plenty for what i need for this camera this is actually the same card that i have in my honda cr 300l thinkware dash cam just like so put this back in there so it stays nice and watertight even though it's going to be under your seat you can still get some moisture to it so you don't want that let's take this thing and get it installed okay so on the right side of the bike on the honda 750 shadow arrow the fuse panel is right here 
So I'm going to mount this box, the DVR unit, right here on top of the battery box. There's a plastic lid. So I'm going to Velcro it right there on top where it'll be easy to take off. Then we have our front cable and our rear cable to go to our cameras. This is going to be our cable we'll run to the front for a remote. And then we have our power cable right here. And it does have an inline fuse, which is 2 amp. So we need to make our connections to our cameras and install them on front and rear, find the location where I want to put them, and then we'll come back here. The last thing we'll do is connect the power, and then we should be ready to try it out. Okay, so as you can see here, I wanted to mount this the way I did on my Honda CRF300L because I really like the position, which is on the brake master cylinder. And I think I'm going to do the same thing on this bike. I just really like this position. It's up high. I don't like the position down low and the video being so low. I like it up high. And then when I turn the bars, the camera turns with it. So I like that. So I'm going to mount this right here. I'm going to use a GoPro style mount instead of the mount that come with it, just because it actually fits on here better. And I can unclip that if I needed to. To. This fits the GoPro style mount, so I got it positioned to where I want it. I need to go ahead and put this on. Then I'll put the camera in here and adjust it to the right angle. So when putting the camera in here, it does have an arrow on it, and this arrow needs to point up. That'll get you pretty close to where your horizon is right. I want to scoot the camera as far forward as I can to kind of clear the windshield. I'd like to not have a lot of this stuff in the view of the camera. So I want to scoot it up to the line of the back of the camera as far forward as I can. Then I'll put the couple Allen screws back in that clamps this down and it should be nice and solid. Then I can adjust my angle up and down and tighten this Allen screw right here. Okay, so as far as what I did for the remote is the same thing I did on my Honda CRF300L. When I mounted the Thinkware M1 dash cam on it, I used a piece of this C-channel that I have to create a flat surface on the rounded part of the handlebar. Uh, double-sided tape is what actually holds this on. And then, of course, the 3M double-sided tape will hold this on to this bracket right here. And it's at a nice place where I can get to it quick if I need to, right here by my twist throttle side to push that button. All right, next here on the back. So I got my mount mounted right there. I can tilt it up and down, mount it to where it's gonna be parallel with the bike when it's straight. Now I need to mount this rear camera with the arrow facing up. I'll set it about like I did the front one. Put my two screws in the bottom right here. And then we can adjust it up and down just like we did the front one and then tighten up our main bolt. And we want it just pretty much horizontal. Now, of course, this camera is going to be lower than the front and it won't turn. That's why, you know, on the front, I wanted the camera to be able to turn with the handlebars and it's at a higher position. Kind of hard to do that on the rear. So uh, the rear, this would be pretty good video anyway. So there we got that one mounted nice and solid. It's not going nowhere. Now we just need to run our cables and hook them up. Okay, so as far as the rear cable on this Honda Shadow, there's a real nice place right here. There's already a wire run from the factory. It goes right down in behind this trim, and we'll go right down in here under the seat, connecting to our main DVR unit. And all we'll have to do, I will put a few zip ties on here along the way just to hold it in place. So as far as connecting the cables on these, uh, super simple. And these are actually the best connectors that I've ever seen on any of these DVR units. This one, they just plug together. They only go one way. So once you get it lined up here, thread them like that. They'll keep it nice and watertight. There's a big one for the front camera. The rear camera is the same thing, except for it's just a smaller connector. Just like that. Plug it in nice and tight, and we'll crank this down nice and snug, and there we go. So as you can see that cable there, it actually fits right behind this bracket. Really nice. I'll tie it down. These two cables, still got to tie these up. But the cable for the remote and the front camera, I just run them under here, up under the tank. I didn't even have to take the tank off. There's plenty of room to reach up under there. Come out of this little, whatever this cowling is right here. Come out right here. I tied them to the cables that are existing going up through here. Run them up right here. And you see my cables connected. Here's the front camera. There's my remote mounted on that bracket I was showing you. So that'd be a nice setup right there on the front of the bike. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the top off the battery so I can connect the ground cable. Our ground is right here on this side. So we're gonna take the ground lead, which is the one that's got the fork connector on it and the red positive is going to go over to the fuse box. I'm going to be careful not to pinch any wires uh, that can cause anything to short out. Just be careful with them when you put them in. Make sure they're out of the way of any pinch points. We're going to replace our screw back on the top of the battery cover. 
Okay, now we have our positive wire that we will connect to the fuse box. I'm going to connect it to this fuse here, this Mark 10 amp odometer, because it's one that will turn on when you turn the key on and turn off when you turn the key off. That's what we want. So basically, you're just going to put this positive wire down inside the contact, and then we'll push our fuse right into the contact with it. And once you pull on it like that, you know you made contact. It should stay in there, no problem. We'll fold our little lid back down here and close it shut. Now we can roll our wires up and mount the DVR unit right there. Okay, so now I have my main DVR units mounted down. I do have the SD card in it. I use some Velcro, hold it nice and solid here. Got my positive wire connected to the 10 amp fuse here. Then I got, of course, it has the 2 amp inline fuse to protect it. And then I have the ground connected to the ground directly to the battery. And now we can turn the key on and see if this thing works. Okay, switch the key on. This should light up. There's blue red flashing, means it's starting up. Now when it goes to blue, it's recording. And it's recording continuous right now, doing the loop recording. And to connect to the Wi-Fi, we'll push this Wi-Fi button to record a video. Like I said, it will lock that 60 second video. We just push record and you can see how this comes on blue flashing. Now we'll do that for the time that it's doing this locked video and saving it on our SD card. And you want to go download the, it's called Dash Cam Link, think the Thinkware app off the App Store. You want to turn your key on now, and whenever this gets done, it turns blue, then you'll connect this Wi-Fi button. Now when you push it, it turns green. So we go into our Wi-Fi on our phone. There we go, Thinkware 1B. Connect on that. Uh, when you enter the password, I believe it's 12345678. Now when we go back into our app, once we're connected to the Wi-Fi, we click on this down here. Click on connect, and it says dash cam connected right here. You can disconnect right there if you wanted to. We don't want to right now. Uh, we want to click on the dash cam settings right here. And in here is all of our settings for our camera. Uh, memory card settings. So the first thing you want to do when you put an SD card in it, just like anything else, you want to format the SD card to this. So to format the SD card, just click format and then click OK. Now we're done. We have it formatted. Uh, we go into camera settings here. You can change the brightness to the front, the rear, uh, rotate the front, rear. We don't want that. We just, everything right there should be set good. Um, go to record settings. Um, super night vision is enabled. That's what we want. And image stabilization is already enabled. And that's what we want. So we'll go back out here, click on system settings. We want to set this to your time zone, your language. Enable daylight savings, speed limit here, United States, so we got it on miles per hour. Speed stamp enabled. I want it to show the speed on the video. It will show the speed that I'm doing. So if I get pulled over, they say I was speeding, I can show them the video and show, no, I was not speeding. We'll go back out of here. So our file list is right here. We click on this button, and this is going to show us the videos that we have recorded. The Continuous recording is everything that's loop recording. So what it's recording uh, while you're writing normally all the time is going to be under this continuous recording. You can click on front camera, rear camera, or all, and it shows both. So if we click on front camera, it's going to bring up the video for that front camera. So And showed me talking. But it was just a split-second video there because I turned the key off a minute ago. We go to manual recording here. This is going to show the videos that whenever we hit that record button on here, then that's going to show that video in here front and rear. So when you're in continuous recording or the manual recording, you can click on the video and click download. That's going to download it into the phone, but not actually onto your video library, your photo library on your phone. Um, to do that, you'll go into here because you just downloaded it. And then you see this downloaded video. Click on that and we want to export. And we want to export to an album. It's gonna save it into my photos library. And now once we back out of here, uh, dash cam info, you can do that if you want to. You can click on, there's a couple other things like support, uh, firmware download, and you should download and update the firmware. You can check out here and download the user manual if you want to. Uh, in case you don't have it with you and you forget something, you need the user manual, you can have it actually on your phone that way. Once we back out, we go into here. If we click on live view, then it's going to show us a live view of the cameras that we are currently on right now. Right now, it shows the front camera. And you can see the R up here. If we hit that, we'll go to the rear camera. Click back on our front camera. 
and it will show you a line here align this green line with the front edge of the hood of your vehicle but uh, we're not in a vehicle right here uh, but it basically it shows you your horizontal so you can set your camera to where it's nice and horizontal flat take the lines off if you don't want to view them microphone button right there but that's all there is so when you're viewing the videos on here you can see it shows your miles per hour 11.9 volts is all all i have in the battery it shows the date time stamp on here so if we rotate the thing of course we're going to show uh, full screen okay so now we can actually take and ride this thing record some videos and i'll take the videos off and put them right here and show you what a daytime and nighttime video looks on the Thinkware M1 Motorsports Cam on a Honda 750 Shadow Aero. Okay guys, that is it for the Thinkware M1 Motorsports Dash Cam on the Honda 750 Shadow Arrow. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Click the subscribe down below. Also check out the link where you can purchase one of these. I have, like I said, I've tested several dash cams for motorcycles over the years. And I do mean several, probably 10 or 12 different versions of different kinds. And by far, to me, so far, the best has been the Thinkware M1, and that's why I have it on my CR300L, and now I have it on my 750 Shadow. Thank you all for watching. Click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Catch you on the next one. Right on.